Okay, so the topic of this video is going to be the genetic inheritance pattern known as incomplete and codominance. So we're going to do two patterns at once, uh, and, and you'll see the two patterns have some features in common with one another, but also some key differences. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's first look at the inheritance pattern called codominance. And the definition of codominance is when a single gene has more than one dominant allele. And if you've seen my other videos before, we've never seen this pattern before. And this was this is this was completely unknown to Gregor Mendel as well. If you recall from Mendel's experiments, you know, he was looking at, for instance, flower color. The peas either had purple flowers or white flowers. Purple was dominant, white was recessive. But in the codominance, it's possible to have more than one dominant allele. And for instance, an example is in the cattle coat or the fur of cattle. For instance, in the picture, we have a, 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 an individual with red fur and an individual with white fur. Now, when you look at the red cow and the, and the white cow, if they were to breed and reproduce with one another, would all the babies come out pink? That'd be adorable if that was true, but no, that, that's a myth. That's not what happens. So what does happen in codominance? Watch this. What we see is a pattern, the reality where both colors are equally expressed. You see like patches of red and you see patches of white, and we call this color pattern here roan. So red's not dominant. White's not, I should say red is not dominant to white, and white is not dominant to red. They are equally dominant. You see both at the same time. A good example of codominance in humans is in blood types. You know, you, you might have heard of different types of blood, like blood type A, blood type B. Well, when we look at blood types, you know, uh, well, here's a red blood cell, and blood type A has these proteins on it. Now, the proteins are not actually shaped like English letter A's. I'm being a little simplistic here, but blood type A has some proteins on the surface. Blood type B has some different kinds of proteins on the surface. So what happens if mom was blood type A and what happens if dad was blood type B? If, the, if mom and dad were to produce a child, for instance, the two blood types would be codominant. The child or the offspring that was born would have characteristics of both blood type A and blood type B. So we're going to go into this in a little more detail. So let's talk about blood types now. When it comes to blood types, there are three alleles. And this is something that we haven't seen before. When Mendel was studying his pea plants, for instance, he was studying the gene for flower color. There were only two alleles. Flower colors were either purple or white. When Mendel was examining the gene for, uh, for seed color, the seeds were either green or yellow. There was never a third option. But in blood types, there are. There's an A allele, which happens to be dominant. There's a B allele, which also happens to be dominant. And there's an O allele, which is recessive. Now, when we look at the picture on the right-hand side, you see the box that said, Mom will pass one of these three alleles onto her offspring. Maybe Mom uh, has type A, maybe she has type B, maybe she has type O. But either way, Mom is going to pass on one of these three alleles to her child. On the top of the picture, dad is going to pass on one of these three alleles to the child. So when you look at what are the, what are the possible genotypes that a child can have when uh, mom and dad have a baby with regards to blood type, these are the nine options. And when we start going through the blood types, A, two capital A's, that's type A blood. 1A and 1B, that's codominant. That's codominant type AB blood. The next one to the right, dominant A and a recessive O, that's blood type A. A is dominant, O is recessive. When we look at this, uh, the middle row, if you inherit one dominant A and one dominant B, again, that's blood type AB. The next box to the right, if you inherit two B alleles, your blood type will be type B. The next one to the right, if you inherit one B from the uh, from mom and one O from dad, blood type, you'll have blood type B. Again, B is dominant, O is recessive. And finally, the bottom layer, or the bottom row of this table here, if you inherit a dominant A from one parent and a recessive O from the other, you'll have blood type A. Blood type A is dominant, blood type O is recessive. 
Same with plot type B. B is dominant, O is recessive. So the only way you can have a type O blood is if you inherit not one O allele, but two O alleles. So what we learned from looking at blood types is that blood type A and B are dominant to blood type O. Blood type O is recessive. So therefore, the only way to have blood type AB is if you inherit a dominant A and a dominant B. They are co-dominant. They are equally dominant. If you inherit one A and one B, A does not cover up B and B does not cover up A. They are equally dominant to one another. So if we were doing this in class, I'd, I'd give you guys some time, but you know, right now, as you're watching this video, you know, read this story, Mike is heterozygous for type A, Lisa's heterozygous for type B, try to set up a Punnett square, pause the video right now, pause the video, try to answer these questions. I'm gonna go over the answers in three, two, one. So first of all, uh, if I say Mike is heterozygous for type A, well, there's the genotype one capital A, one recessive O. That's what it means to be heterozygous. If Lisa's heterozygous for type B blood, she's gonna have one dominant B allele and a recessive O allele. So now when I do the Punnett square, I just have to fill in the A's, the O's, the B's, and the O's, and these are my results. I can look at question A. What is the prob probability of having a child with type A blood according to this situation? probability is 25%. Look at question B. What is the probability of having a child with co-dominant blood? Well, that answer is also 25%. And you can see the, uh, the, the part of the Punnett square that I've highlighted is the co-dominant option. And then question C. What's the probability of having a child that's heterozygous? In this case, there's a 75% a chance of having a heterozygous child. Remember, heterozygous is a different combination of alleles. And so there's three out of four right there. Try this one. Jason is homozygous for type A blood and Maria is heterozygous for type B blood. Their child, Rick, has co-dominant blood. You know, pause the video and try to draw a pedigree. Try to complete A, B, and C. I'm going to go over the answers in three, two, one. So first of all, if I'm going to try to draw a pedigree for this family, Jason is a square, Maria is a circle, squares for men, circles for women, and it says, the story says they have a child, Rick. Rick is a boy's name, so I'm going to use a square for Rick. Now the story says that Jason, the father, has type A blood. Now there's two options for type A blood, either capital A, capital A, which is homozygous, or capital A, lowercase o, which is heterozygous. Now the story says he's homozygous. So I know Jason has to be capital A, capital A. What about Maria, the mom? Maria has type B blood. Now there's two ways to have type B blood. You can either be homozygous, capital B, capital B, or heterozygous, capital B, lowercase o. The story says Maria is heterozygous, so I know she has to be capital B, lowercase o. And it says their child, Rick, has co-dominant blood. What the heck does that mean? What does it mean to have co-dominant blood? What it means is that you have one dominant A and one dominant B allele. So now that I've drawn the pedigree, question A, I can move on to question B. Complete a Punnett square for Jason and Maria. Well, I know Jason is capital A, capital A, and I know Maria is capital B, lowercase o. So when I fill in the Punnett square, this is what it should look like right here. And so I've now completed question B. Now I can look at question C. Well, the story says Rick has co-dominant blood, but what were the odds of that happening? From the Punnett square, you can see the odds of that happening were 50%. So let's move on to the next part of this. So how does co-dominant differ from what we call incomplete dominance? Well, before we go into incomplete dominance, let's take a moment to review what Mendel was studying when he was looking at the flower color of, of pea plants. You know, he, had a, he bred purple flowers with white flowers. And when he did, the purple flower would, would pass on a dominant purple allele. And when he bred this situation, the white parent would pass on a recessive white allele. And so 
when he bred his uh, his pea plants like this, purple cross with white, 100%, 100% of his flowers grew purple flowers. And this is because Mendel figured out that purple must be dominant to white. Mendel uncovered the genetics pattern called autosomal recessive. White is recessive, purple was dominant. So um, we haven't seen any other type of example other than what we see right here. But incomplete dominance is very different. Watch this. With incomplete dominance, neither allele is completely dominant. So for instance, heterozygous individuals blend their appearance. For instance, if one parent was red and one parent was white, when they reproduce and make offspring, the heterozygous offspring would be pink in this case, blended, red and white blend to make pink. We haven't, we haven't seen this option before. So this explains why some genes can have, uh, there can be more than two phenotypes. We've never seen that before. There are only two phenotypes possible when Mendel was studying his pea plants. The flowers were either purple or white. There was never a third option. So this explains why many flower colors, um, why many flowers, I should say, uh, exhibit more than just two colors. You look at all the colors of roses, all the different colors of carnations because of incomplete dominance. So here we have a practice problem. Uh, a certain species of fish, blue scales, capital B, capital B, and yellow scales, capital Y, capital Y, are incomplete dominant. Fill in the Punnett square for a genotype of a blue male and a green female. You know, uh, try to do the Punnett square and answer these two questions. I'm gonna, uh, I want you to pause the video and try to do it yourself. I'm gonna go over the answers in three, two, one. Well, if you had a hard time getting started, maybe it helps to just make a key. So in the story, you're told that capital B, capital B is blue, capital Y, capital Y is yellow. But the question says one of the parents, the female, is green. Does that mean we use capital G, capital G for green? No. Remind yourself what yellow and blue mix to make. Yellow and blue mix to make green. Green is a blended mix of blue and yellow. So for that reason, you'll use B and Y. So now you can set up your Punnett square, a blue male, capital B, capital B, a green female, capital B, capital Y. Now you can fill in the Punnett square. And if I were to ask you in the top left-hand corner, what color would that fish be? Only capital Bs, it'd be blue. Top right corner, it'd be green. Lower left corner, it'd be blue. The lower right hand corner, it'd be green. So question A, what is the probability of obtaining a heterozygous fish? I hope you see the answer is 50%. Heterozygous means a different combination of alleles. How about question B, what's the probability of growing a yellow fish? It's not possible in this Punnett square. In this Punnett square, it's only possible to produce blue or green fish. Yellow is not possible. So here's another practice problem. Uh, carnations show incomplete dominance where red allele, where red allele and white allele blend to make pink. That's a very important sentence. A pink colored male pollinated a pink colored female. So both parents are pink. Seven seeds were created, the seeds were planted and they later grew into plants with three having pink flowers, two with white flowers and two with red flowers. So Pause the video, pause the video, and try to complete A, B, and C. I'm going to go over the answers in three, two, one. So the first thing I'm going to have you do is create a pedigree for the nine individuals, the two parents and the seven offspring. So again, maybe make a key. It's a good way to get started where two capital R's would represent red, two capital W's would represent white. So are you going to use two capital P's for pink? No, I hope not. For pink, remind yourself what pink is. Pink is a mixture of R for red and W for white. So you're told in the story that both parents are pink and that they produce seven seeds. Of the seven seeds, three have pink flowers and two have white flowers and two have red flowers. So we're on our way to filling out this Punnett square and the pedigree here. 
So the story also says both, in a, both parents, a pink-colored male pollinated a pink-colored female. Both parents are pink, RW for both parents. Well, now I can set up my Punnett square because now I know the genotype of both parents. So when I set up the Punnett square and then I fill in the R's and I fill in the W's, I hope you see what we have here. There's a one out of four chance the seeds would have grown to have red petals. There's a two out of four chance that the seeds would have grown to have pink petals. And there's a one out of four chance that the seeds would have grown to have white petals. So if you were gonna, if you were gonna fill in uh, the probability of or question C, the answer to question C, what is the probability of growing pink from the Punnett square? You can see the answer is two out of four or 50%. You also can now figure out the genotype of all seven offspring. All the, th the three pink ones have to be R's and W's. The two white ones have to be W's and the two reds have to be R's. So there you go. There's a, a fairly lengthy story problem there that you can complete on incomplete dominance. So just to sum up this video, look at these two pictures. Which is which? Which flower shows incomplete dominance? Which flower shows co-dominance? So pause the video if you need some time to think about it. I'm going to show the answers in three, two, one. Did you get it correct? On the left, the pink flower is where they blend, and that's incomplete dominance. On the right is where you see both colors at the same time, and you can see red and white petals at the same time. That's called co-dominance. So that's the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful for reviewing and understanding the difference between co-dominance and incomplete dominance.